Allah is more than what you can ask for. Do you think you and your puny little body can ask Allah something that will that will that will not uh, that Allah will not be able to give? Do you think me and you combined are going to diminish the kingdom of Allah with our requests? Is Allah Azza wa Jal like a millionaire that He gives a thousand and that His money will be diminished? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Wallillahi khazainu samawati wal ard. To Allah belongs the treasures of the heavens and earth, and Allah will give and give and give, and He will still have infinity to give. So the believer asks Allah for anything and everything. There is no holes barred. And this is the, the fundamental difference between asking Allah and asking the creation. When you ask the creation, the more you ask the creation, the more irritated they will be at you. But the more you ask Allah, the more Allah will love you. The more you ask Allah, the more Allah will love you. Why? Because everything belongs to Allah. You belong to Allah and I belong to Allah. So you ask Allah, acknowledging and recognizing that Allah is Malikul Mulk. Allah is the one who tu'ti man tasha wa tudillu man tasha wa, uh, that, that Allah Azza wa Jal tu'izzu man tasha wa tudillu man tasha That Allah Azza wa Jal is the one that whoever wishes to give, Allah says, when I wish to give, nobody can stop what I want to give. And when I want to prevent, nobody can give what I will prevent. So my dear brothers and sisters, the story of Iblis and Adam is a story that so much we can benefit from, but only looking simply at the angle of dua and at the angle of turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can derive so many benefits. And very quickly to conclude the, the first half of the khutbah, even look at the manners that Adam and Iblis used when they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Adam says, Rabbana zalamna anfusana. And Iblis says, Anvirni ila In the tone, the language, the mannerisms, the content, there is so much difference. Adam begins with the name of Allah, Rabbana. And so we too as well should begin du'as with the name of Allah. We should always try to incorporate Ya Rahman, Irhamni, Ya Razzaq, Urzukhni, Ya Ghaffar, Ighfirli, Ya Rahman, Irhamni. And Allah says to him belongs the beautiful names, so make dua using those names. Number two, Adam says, ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا So when we make a dua, we begin, after we praise Allah, we begin by acknowledging our shortcomings. Oh Allah, I ask you because you are a rahman al rahim and I am your servant who is a sinner. I have not worshipped you the way you deserve to be worshipped, but I still am asking you because you are Akramul Akrameen, you are Arhamul Rahimeen, and I am the Mudnib, the Faqir. I, and what did Musa say? Rabbi inni lima anzalta min khairin Faqir. Musa is saying, Oh my Lord, I am Faqir to you. Anything you give me, I am Faqir. I'm a beggar. I have no choice other than you. So we acknowledge our shortcomings in front of Allah. And we acknowledge we have not been perfect worshippers. We acknowledge our sins. Then we, after we praise Allah and we acknowledge our sins, Rabbana ظلمنا أنفسنا Then we ask Allah what we want. فَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا Forgive us, have mercy on us. And in this we plead and we beg. لَنَكُنَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And this shows us sincerity. The dua has to come from the heart. The dua has to come from the qalb, not just from the tongue. As for Iblis, look at the arrogance of Iblis. قَالَ أَنظِرْنِي إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ it is as if he is commanding. It is as if, allow me to live or let me live. This is like a command. Let me live till the day of judgment. No Rabbana Walamna, no nothing of this. It is simply, uh, allow me to live or let me live until the day of judgment. There is no shortcoming acknowledge. There is no inherent praise of Allah. So all of this shows us the differences between the etiquettes of Adam and the etiquettes of Iblis. And obviously we must follow the etiquettes of Adam as we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallahu wa ta'ala.